Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kerry. I just thought I'd pop on and show my face at the beginning of one of these videos for a change. Today's video is the meals of the week. It's the beginning of the week. I haven't yet filmed anything. I'm just making tea. I've got some rice cooking here and I've got slow cooker, chilli going. That's what we're having. I'll show you in this dish up in a moment. And I made sourdough bread. I'm so pleased with it. Look. Squidge. Anyway, enough of my bread that I'm very, very proud of because I've practiced a lot. That's our tea tonight. I'll show you it in a moment. This is Meals of the Week and uh, I hope you enjoy it and we'll see what the week brings in food for us. And here is our chilli for tea. So we're going to have a little bit of cheese on top. The children have got some of that lovely sourdough bread. Still very proud. <laughs> and we're going to have cheese on and because it's a mild chili so it suits us all it's made with quinoa a few vegetables and some beans really tasty i've changed my recipe a little bit i was playing around with it this morning when i was popping in in the slow cooker and it seems to work really well um we've got some uh, jalapenos and some chili flakes on top of the cheese to just give a little bit of a kick to ours because i want to make it family friendly so we can all eat the same thing there's lots left and i'm going to keep some for lunch tomorrow and pop some in the freezer and um, there's mine and I'm going to have famous tees on mine in a moment just so you can see it without the uh, extra bits and bobs on top and some lovely fluffy basmati rice. Um, it almost looks like microwave rice, doesn't it? It's not, I promise. Key to good rice is soaking it. Rinse it, rinse it, rinse it and soak it. That's what I found anyway. So there we go. There is our quinoa and bean chilli with some fluffy basmati and a little bit of bread on the side. We were supposed to be having spaghetti bolognese tonight, but my little girl didn't eat her chilli very well last night, so I'm giving her a break from that type of dish, like a, a saucy thing with a rice or pasta. I don't know. I just want to give her something that I know that she'll definitely eat. She just, she's gone off beans, so that's why she didn't like the chilli, as they do. Oh, clean my bench. <laughs> and, um... Anyway, so yeah, so I just thought I'd do something nice and easy and something tasty and I just bought the potatoes at Costco today so they're nice and fresh and they're really nice. Steve and I have got some uh, cheese savoury on ours. I made it really quickly with some grated cheese, some red onion, some mayonnaise. I used Hellman's uh, vegan mayonnaise which is delicious, really nice. I don't like the taste of eggs and I've tasted regular mayonnaise after tasting this one and I can taste eggs in the other one. I never used to be able to. It was obviously so very, very mild in it, but I can taste it now. So Steve's got a little bit of beans. Uh, I, we've both got a bit of side salad. Children didn't want any. I just want them to eat their food. So today that's fine. They've just had a banana and they get snacks at school. So I really don't mind. Not sure today. They'll probably have carrots for their supper later anyway. So Eris has got cheese. Isaac's got cheese and beans. And we've got cheese savoury. There we go. Just really easy jacket potatoes and they're delicious. In the oven for about an hour and a half. I turned them up for the last 20 minutes to make them really crispy on the outside and just really, really good. There we go. This evening we are having a brown lentil bolognese. Please excuse the noise, I've got the extractor pan on because I am cooking my sofrito, which is onions, celery and carrots, as you can see. I'm just going to cook those really slowly for about 20 minutes while I do other things. I've got about 200 grams of brown lentils oh, and a rogue piece of onion <laughs> um, soaking there until this is ready. When these are cooked I'm going to add in there some rosemary and thyme, let that cook a little bit longer and then give it lots of flavour with some red wine. There we go, it's not a sofrito anymore. I've added two mushrooms that I've chopped into small pieces so the children don't know they're there just for some extra nutrition in the dish some thyme and some rosemary. There's a little salt in there as well, salt helps to stop the onions from burning. And then the best bit, I'm going to pour in about a medium glass of wine maybe. Uh, Medium-ish, small to some people, maybe. And just let the, oh it smells delicious. Let the uh, alcohol cook off and let all that flavour seep in. And then I'll add the rest of my ingredients. There we go. There is my ragu slash bolognese, whatever you want to call it, cooking up. I've added the brown lentils, a tin of chopped tomatoes, and then just like bashed them up with my wooden spoon. It does have a couple of cloves of garlic in as well, which I forgot. 
and I've put two tablespoons of tomato paste, you could use tomato puree, and 500 millilitres of vegetable stock. And I'm just going to turn this down to a simmer and leave it until the lentils are cooked and it should take about 30 to 40 minutes on a slow simmer and I might add a little bit of Worcester sauce in it. I just like the flavour of it, but we'll see how it goes. There we go, there we have my little brown lentil ragu. That's been in there about 45 minutes. And I have added a few big spoonfuls, maybe like a ladle full and a half of the pasta water from the spaghetti there into it to loosen the sauce, give it a, a little bit more sauce because it, it was starting to go quite dry. But because there's already so much in there and so much flavour in tomatoes, I didn't need to add any more stock or any more passata or anything like that. So there we go. And I'll um, dish up and show you it all on our plates. Here we go. Here is our finished brown lentil bolognese, ragu, whatever we're going to call it, with spaghetti today. I tried to get some tagliatelle yesterday, but I couldn't find any. I was at Costco. Um, but yeah, there we go. And it tastes lovely. And I burnt the garlic bread. Can't have everything, can we? I was too busy talking to my husband, who was washing the dishes. He wasn't just distracting me. He was washing the dishes that I'd used so far. So, um... He was doing something useful and I just forgot about it. I turned the alarm off and forgot it was there. So not the end of the world. We've still got a lovely tea. I think might have a little bit of Parmesan on top. There we go. Oh, and I did I did put a little bit of Worcester sauce into the um, ragu. My mum used Worcester sauce in bolognese when I was a little girl. And I just, it just doesn't feel right to me without that flavour in it. So there we go. These are quite small bowls. They're not like huge pasta bowls, you can see. So it looks like a huge big portion, but it's not, it's not that big. There we go. There is our uh, brown lentil bolognese. I'm off to enjoy the rest of our Thursday evening. It's Friday night, so we're all having pizza. Isaac and Eris are having theirs now. C and I are going to eat a little later, but we're all having the same thing. I think I'll have a salad with mine, no, just a very small pizza. I've made a big batch of pizza sauce, and I'm going to uh, portion that up and pop it in the freezer just kept it out to use for our pizzas this is Isaac's and Eris's. I have used my sourdough starter to make the bases but it's just a regular pizza base and I've just subbed some of the flour out for the starter just to give it a lovely flavour really more than anything else and they've got some wedges they look a little bit dark because I've um, put a little bit of paprika on them when they've been cooking in the air fryer just to make them taste delicious so there we go we've got a delicious hidden vegetable tomato sauce on our pizza tomato base uh, with cheddar and mozzarella and a sourdough base there's Isaac's Nerises and I'll come back and show you ours a little bit later on. Here is mine and Steve's tea and we are trying to offset the pizza with some salad. I know it doesn't work that way but it makes me feel better. We've got some wedges. I made like piri piri wedges in the air fryer so I just cut three potatoes into some wedges and popped them in the air fryer, sprayed them with some oil. I can't... Is my sprayer out? No, it's not out. I've got this little glass spray bottle thing that I use for spray and I popped some of this on, which peri peri salt. I think it might be from B&M, but maybe like about six months or so ago. It's just been in the cupboard, but it's just seasoning, so it doesn't run out. Has it got a date on it? Am I using? But you know what? I don't trust dates. It's normally best before, isn't it? And it doesn't really mean anything. So anyway, I digress pizza we've got pizza base homemade pizza base with like three cheese we've got mozzarella cheddar and um oh no i didn't put any parmesan on so just two cheese mozzarella and cheddar and we've got tomatoes and red onion and jalapenos and some wedges there's the rest of pizza Steve likes cold pizza i don't so whatever we don't eat he'll eat for lunch tomorrow i think this is more than enough for me that's a huge plate so there we go that's our friday night pizza wedges and salad this evening we are having a nice salad. Um, I've made a quiche. It's a little bit later than what I wanted it to be because I took some pastry out of the freezer and it had been in there too long and it wasn't good. So I had to quickly make some pastry, wait for it to set in the fridge and then get it back out, blah, 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 blah. blah. But it seems to have worked out okay. Um, so we've got a big salad. Oh, I want some beetroot. I'm going to get some beetroot out as well. Got some little bit of cheese, some um, salad potatoes that I've cooked in a vegetable stock just put stuck a stock cube in the water a tiny little bit of butter and some peeled cloves of garlic and cook and it just makes the potatoes taste really really nice um oh what's happened to my quiche 
Steve's looks a bit better. <laughs> it's because it's still warm and I've taken it apart. It only has two eggs in it because I don't like the taste of eggs. And with just the two eggs in it, it helps it to set. You can't really taste them. So um, that's why it's not solid like some of the quiches you get. Uh, we've got a little bit of hummus. And you can see there, the children's looks a bit more like a mezze board. Um, but they've all got the same. And Steve and the children also have a... Um, it's not quite a hard boiled, it's a, it's a soft hard boiled egg if that makes sense. Um, and some bread, some fresh bread, homemade bread. There we go, we're having a, a lovely salad with quiche and new potatoes. We are having a little dinner today. The children and Steve have got sausages, the children have got caramelised onion sausages and Steve has got Italian sausages. I've got some red lentil croquettes which I um, Made really, really quickly, fried up some onion, cooked some red lentils, and then added some paprika, mustard powder, a tiny bit of parmesan, made them into croquette shapes, rolled them in flour, and then just very, very quickly shallow fried them. Very shallowly. <laughs> and um, some tender stem broccoli, Yorkshire pudding, some mash, some roasted new potatoes, and some sweet corn. The children have got regular plain mash. I've got a little bit of both. Steve doesn't like plain mash, so just half it, and then I stir in a little garlic and um, whole grain mustard. I like both, so I have like the same amount, but halved up. There we go. Oh, and I made the gravy. I homemade gravy too. So there is our really lovely little dinner, actually. Yeah, there we go. This is the children's tea for this evening. I thought I would show it anyway, just to show you that they do occasionally eat junk as well. They have had a dinner at school. They have a very nutritious uh, cooked lunch at school every day, but I can't get out of them what they had today. Isaac just says, it was just too yummy, mummy. So... There we go. So they asked for chicken nuggets and chips. So I have adhered to their request and provided. I've also given them a couple of mozzarella sticks. Isaac spotted them in the freezer and they'll have a little bit of ketchup. Doesn't hurt, does it? Uh, just for once and then back on to the eating what we eat uh, with us tomorrow. I was going to make us something really nice and romantic because it's Valentine's Day, but um, I'm having cheesy chips and gravy instead. <laughs> But we really like it. Or poutine, if you are Canadian. Well, it's not really poutine because I can't find cheese curds anywhere. I would love cheese curds. Um, when we used to live abroad, they used to sell cheese curds in one of the shops and it makes the best cheesy chips and gravy. But um, yeah, we've just got mo a little bit of mozzarella and cheddar on top of some oven fries. Um, freezer, frozen oven cooked fries. If that makes sense. But it'll be delicious. And we're having a lovely evening, so <laughs> it doesn't matter back to normal service tomorrow. Uh, the children are eating separately today because I've got my children's godmother's daughter here, I'm babysitting, I want to say goddaughter, that's not right, but she's here with us. So she's got a little dinner and then, and she has a dairy allergy. So we haven't got naan breads, we've got some wraps with it. And we've got a little vegetable curry made with coconut milk and some air fryer chips and a little bit of fluffy rice for them all to eat. And here is Mine and Steve's tea. We are having almost identical to what all the children had, but ours is just a pea and potato curry with a little bit extra, um, well, not an extra because they didn't have any, some hot chilli powder in. I put a teaspoon of hot chilli powder in and this curry is really tasty. You could do it with chicken, you could do it with beef, you could use whatever vegetables you want to. It's all made from scratch. It took me 15 minutes to make. Obviously, it's going to take you a little bit longer if you've got to... Um, cook some meat but you could just brown your chicken off while you're preparing your vegetables but the baby who was only 15 months old ate the lot she had seconds <laughs> and she loved it and you could just take separate the children's and then put some more spice in if you want for um adults so I'm going to leave the recipe down below it's so easy it's just a tin of coconut milk a few spices that are so easy to get hold of and yeah that's it. Oh, I also did put some mustard seeds and steel mine, just because I've cooked it separately. If I was cooking it all together, I wouldn't have put it in. I would have just added the chilli powder to ours or some chilli flakes or something. But it's really tasty and really easy to do. So we've just got pea and potato with the red peppers. The children have broccoli, obviously, which you've just seen in theirs. And yeah, and some fluffy rice. And that's it. And that is the end of this week's video. It's been a bit up and down. Well, it was mostly down yesterday, wasn't it? <laughs> but apart from that, it's been quite good. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's given you some inspiration 
for your meals going forward this week and next week. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.